Tom, I'm uh, I'm so glad you joined me today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Um, so your your latest project is the the Mauritanian. Uh, how did you get started on that? Um, well, I yeah, I just uh, got a call from my agent one day saying we've got this <laughs> <laughs> got this quite interesting project which uh, which we're trying to get you on. So. Um, yeah, it, it all happened pretty quickly, actually. Once once I uh, heard about the possibility, you know, I was very soon chatting to Kevin um, and very soon after that, writing a few concept demos. Um, and then there was a little hiatus of uh, while the, well, I think all the, the powers that be thought about it. And then um, it was all go because the deadline was... Uh, Fairly extreme, and that's uh, that's Kevin McDonald, who the, you know, the director who also did, uh, among other things, the Last King of Scotland. Exactly. Uh, yes. Know. Um, so when when you were brought on, uh, at, at what stage was it? Were you you know scoring to film? Was it the script? What was it? Uh, I was scoring to uh, yeah, final cut, and a fairly uh, everything was in in very good shape in, in that in that respect um not sure really how much how much i can say but uh essentially i think there were there were without going into detail other composers before me hmm. um and so yeah and the music wasn't it was the music was the last thing to get resolved um so yeah from in terms of workflow you know that was quite handy really because i had you know uh yeah picture was locked the sound was very this very clean um you know there was no there were no question marks there and uh, i knew exactly what to expect um yeah so so no i came on came on very late uh and the deadline was you know six weeks from when i started so um fully mixed recorded orchestra of the works yeah so i mean i, I think i think it's more co uh, more common than it should be as far as i know that these kind of crazy deadlines but uh you, you know you you always uh well there are pluses and minuses um i was about I was about to say uh, you know you always hope to get on nice and early and have a bit of time to think about it but um you know this this way is also uh yeah, every everyone's minds are really concentrated, including your own. And you know, it's like, okay, let's go for it. You know, so uh, yeah, and you just clear clear the decks and um, hit the deadline. I was uh, going to say, with with six weeks, you know, I, I guess at least the the positive of that is there's no kind of being on the fence or wondering, oh, do I do this or do that? You just have to go. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's you're absolutely right. I mean, I I think well, I, like as I, I've got to say, I I reckon as as a you know, media composers, it's pretty hard to to spend too long on the fence because you know just because of the uh, the deadline. Um, I mean, if you're on nice and early and you can experiment with concepts and try and you know go down a few alleys that might end up being blind then you know that's okay but but yeah when the uh you know when 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 time's not on your side then absolutely yeah you've you you have to commit to to an idea and um yeah and that's uh, as always yeah, yeah that's there's the pluses and the minuses right. um but it's yeah yeah so because of that then i mean how much how much time did you have to sort of brainstorm these, the concepts and the uh, the different kind of distinct palettes that you use throughout the score? Um, well, I just had to go for it really. Um, and make some, make some choices based on early discussion, you know, the, the discussions with Kevin. So, um, it was, you know, it was very clear straight away how 
thematic he wanted it to be in terms of um you know character based thematic really well three kind of the three leads plus a more um sound worldy theme around guantanamo um so then it was just a case of finding you know finding sort of four answers to to start with um and like because i i said because because it needs to be so thematic i immediately you know i knew I, it was one of those things one of those uh, scenarios where i kind of had to sit down at the piano and write a theme you know fairly old style really um and try and find something that i thought would be robust enough that was going to carry through you know um and then immediately you take that and explore a couple of options which you then share with uh, with the director and um and if that sort of feels like it's landing you can you can try and roll it out and see see where it leads so yeah it was um i i actually haven't done that for a while it's it's uh yeah you might call it kind of yeah you know old school or old fashioned way of going about it maybe i i don't i'd be interested to speak to other composers where i'm sure lots of people do still just st sit down at the piano for yeah um but for me i'd quite often just explore a sound world and um maybe try some some production concepts simultaneously with writing melodies and and sort of gently see where it leads whereas this was very much like okay I need I need some clean kind of melodic harmonic answers and <laughs> we have to get them now you know the, the night the night the gig was confirmed I was I was at the piano obviously trying to write <laughs> write Mahamadou's theme you know <laughs> um and that that that's what stuck so um and uh to yeah to sit same degree really with with Couch um you know uh, Cumberbatch's character um <clears throat> Jodie's foster character took took a bit uh, Nancy's theme took a bit longer um and uh there was a lot more back and forth and um the kind of Guantanamo sound world I sort of uh just left to the end because mm. you know these more sort of sound world type um themes you know well, part, the whole as soon as you're into trying to create something that is uh more production based or at least it, it then then uh, you know that type of stuff takes a lot longer because you know just uh it's not just a melody that's kind of springing out of your head it's much more like oh well you know you can you can spend spend hours just messing around with how much saturation you want to use on <laughs> some some uh, distortion plugin or whatever you know um so so yeah i left that one till later um but but no it was it was very much a case of um uh it just kind of hitting the ground running really um yeah how i just i think the, your very original question was how how, <laughs> how, how i distinguished them um and uh, i sort of just found my way uh i you know i sort of i knew that i was going to need to um i was going to need to pigeonhole them and i sort of just waited to see how the how the music landed and then sort of siphoned them off in different directions which which came became clear fairly quickly yeah and it it does work with how the film is structured where a lot of it is you know, basically cordoning off an individual character you know following them for a little while and so it, it allows for of that personal theme to to carry through um so yeah that that makes a lot of sense and you know talking about kind of the the sound designy aspect or not sound design but um like soundscape sound world aspect mm. that really you know there's obviously some underscoring going on but then that really comes to the forefront later on in the film where it kind of in, in two separate types you have these sort of dreamy aspects of Muhammadu where he's kind of imagining being uh, somewhere else and somewhere much more positive 
and mm-hmm. then the uh, the kind of hallucinatory sequence where you know, Brett, you know the, there's it's not underscore. I mean, it it comes to the forefront and really takes the the viewer into this like just like hellish nightmare world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that that's exactly it. And that's that sequence is <laughs> it's really quite long. You know, it's most of yeah. It's most of real six actually. Um, and yeah, there's sort of what three or four or five cues almost that uh, go pretty much back to back and um yeah that's uh, it was it was an interesting it was an interesting period when i when i got onto that section <laughs> i was sort of pushing it back pushing it back and I was like here we go i have to watch, watch these uh, watch these scenes in special projects over and over again um yeah which was uh, grueling you know um uh, but uh, yeah but yeah, it's, so it's you know, for for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, um, it's a a film that you know, follows both a prisoner in Guantanamo Bay as well as the sort of court case that coincides with it. And so there is a like very just graphic, horrible you know, torture nightmare sequence uh, later on in the film, and. <sighs> I don't know what is what's your mentality or what's what's going through your mind when you're watching something like that. I mean, it's not it's not a normal action sequence where you know people get shot, but it's you know it's cinematic. I mean, that is mm. just really visceral. Yeah, yeah, and that's absolutely how how uh, Kevin wanted it. Um, yeah, it makes it much. It does make it much more intense to score. Um, as you say, when when it's a sort of uh, you know sort of more typical action sequence, you do kind of have a certain distance, uh, which which uh, makes it easier. Whereas this was uh, you're right in amongst it. Um, yeah, I mean the other the interesting sort of uh, production challenge as well was it was of all the sections where you didn't really know how the sound was going to be it was also those because of course those kind of sections could be completely sound driven and be just as powerful or they mm-hmm. could be fully music driven um and you never really know those kind of answers until the final dub so you're kind of you know just as as the composer you're trying to find an answer that you think will will land if if the director chooses to go with music really to the forefront um and but equally if it then happens to be more underscorey that that'll that'll work and they can pair it back and what have you um i mean i suppose i was you're 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 relying on the themes that you've presented, especially with Mohamedou's theme and also Couch, which becomes a, in more general terms, I suppose is a, you know, kind of military justice type of theme. And you're relying on those having landed enough that when you distort them and manipulate them and, or completely redefine them, that, that material is still gonna gonna connect you to to the narrative um and so you know that you can sort of think of the music in the same way as you know and you you could as you as as what's happening to Mohammedu, you know and you can just think about distressing the theme and um manipulating it you know and extremely darkly and um and that gives you something to hang on to um but yeah I, i'm <laughs> run out of steam <laughs> that's fine um and and i guess in a in a broader sense too with the just kind of the, the content and the tone of the film i mean it's i mean it it is throughout um you know quite a dark quite a disturbing film that kind of where that ratchets up as it goes. 
Um, I mean, is there, or do you, do you have any hesitation working on a project like that, especially kind of with the the political undertones or overtones, I guess, throughout it? Um. Well, I guess it, in this respect, it's it's kind of helpful because it's it feels like a story that's in, important to be told. Um, I guess um, if, if if it was <laughs> if you really if you really didn't uh, agree with the message uh, or, or what have you, then then yeah that that. Right. Uh, that would be that'd be a whole different kettle of fish but this is yeah um yeah the, i i suppose uh, the the caveat to that would be it, it, it it's kind of you know when you you know you're not always it you know, well you're only sometimes in that wider political space in, in your head to be honest like when the project comes in and you realize what it is then you're there and you're like, oh, wow, okay, you know, and, and maybe, it, and you watch it for the first time and you see this is a true story come up and, you know, and, and you've done, done a bit of research and you realize that, you know, um, uh, what exactly has, took place with, with um, Slahi. And, um, but then of course you get into the, the filmmaking process um, and so there's that there's that other side of you know you really you're just you're trying to do right for the film and the characters in the film and the narrative and um so then it becomes about you know the character portrayals and um and how you know and how the and how how the and the storytelling um and then i suppose you get to the end and you realize that especially yeah especially now afterwards and you could, and uh, um i saw i i just a couple of weeks ago i i saw that uh, you know slahi had a you know an op-ed in 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 mm. a big in, in something all about you know what what was going to happen um to guantanamo and then you, of course you realize that it's uh, yeah, it sort of throws you back into this wider political sphere, and and you realise uh, that it's not just just a film. You know, it's right. it's a it's a it's a true story. Um, and they're they're um, you know, it's that's a well, that's a very powerful thing. Yeah, I mean, and that's because I didn't. You know, I I tend not to read about films before I watch them or, or to read as little as possible. Um, mm. you know, cause I, I just like going in kind of that, that totally clean slate. Um, and so I had, I had no idea what it was about and then watching it, I had no idea that it was you know, actually based on a true story. I, I kind of thought it was just a, uh, dramatization. Um, and yeah, I mean, especially as an American, you know, I was, uh, you know, I I very distinctly remember 9/11 happening, and so that whole last 20 years is very, I mean it's it's very much a part of mine and every other American adult's uh, you know mentality. I mean that's that's just been kind of yeah. built inside of us, and so it it is you know particularly powerful, even if you know some of the things that were going on to actually see them on screen like that. And yeah, I mean, that that just makes it so much more kind of impactful. And I mean, the, the fact that it, it was going on a couple of years ago, I mean, so relevant. I yeah, mean, it's, it yeah. still exists. Yeah, I feel the whole thing feels, uh, yeah, it feels very raw, doesn't it? Um, yeah. yeah. No, that's... Uh... But I mean, obviously, that's not, you know, um, and I don't, I don't even want to say controversial. But uh, taking certain political or historical uh, works is not something that you've shied away from. You know, one of your most recent projects was scoring the uh, the documentary series, the uh, Rise of the Nazis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was another another great project. Really interesting, um, especially in in the context of uh 
you know what's going on <laughs> politically in in yeah, yeah uh, UK and the states um and uh yeah that, actually that and that that uh scoring that did 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 help with with the dark <laughs> the darker scenes actually um cause the, uh the brief the brief but i remember doing first sort of first set of concept demos for rise of the nazis and uh julian jones the director he, he was you know broadly was was very enthusiastic about what i'd done he was like but you know the he was like well the main i guess his, his main note was he want he just he wanted less hope <laughs> and I was like, and it's it actually very, uh, it's very interesting to think about because you know, most music has, I think part of it's you realise that uh, most music has something, like even the even say the the most um, it, even the 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 saddest piece uh, has the part of the reason why it's it's uh, so emotive is is the possibility of hope and even the most uh, and you know equally the most joyous piece um part of the reason why you can feel that joy is because of the knife edge of despair um and i, I think probably most you could probably say that about most music and that's why one of the things that it can kind of resonate for people you know when they feel uh you know the feeling and emotion it's this it, it's actually a dual one so so then to be so then to try and sort of damp you know kind of dampen that completely just to just to this really dark hopeless place that was that was that was very interesting uh and it made made for a very strong concept which i think was quite in, from a sort of music uh perspective was great to get on because you have this very focused idea and it's like right okay um but actually yeah then that 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 became quite useful when we are in the darker the you know the darkest of dark places with uh with Mohammedu. and you know again sticking with the the darkest of dark places i mean <laughs> You know, I've I've talked with some composers, and you hear some you know directors or writers who, when they talk about uh, creating that sort of material, you know, they have to channel something within them or or you know, reach their own personal dark places uh, in order to create that. I mean, is that is that something that you had to do as well, or was it you know not not as uh, kind of internal having to rip part of you out to to score those scenes um that's a tricky question uh i think may, maybe though of all the times when you're feeling the reality of you know the true story it's probably there um so and you know you're kind of so it's oh i'm not necessarily going to a dark place but i'd be going to a despairing place i guess it's more you know, you know what that kind of what does this say about humanity mm -hmm. um so yeah I, so yes and no i mean for sure like the i mean that whole section had to be done in yeah because the timeline was still i was probably got through it in in about four or five days you know so but for that period of time when i was watching it over and over again yeah i definitely wasn't wasn't sleeping that well um and uh, yeah it's something like that um you know it's not like you're kind of yeah so it's a kind of it was a sort of dark despair, I suppose. Um, yeah, interesting. Don't know. Interesting. Um, and kind of on that same, and in a similar vein, you know, between that uh, and Rise of the Nazis, at least, 
are you are you hoping to be able to work on some projects that and and you know, maybe your kids are much older and this doesn't apply, uh, <laughs> but that you know they can actually watch and enjoy and be like, oh yeah, you, know, you worked on this. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what that would be quite nice? They're they're uh, <laughs> they're, they're four and three, so they definitely won't yeah, be watching this. Just, for under, a while. just under the age range for that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, McMafia was pretty dark as well. So mm. um, yeah. It's, uh, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's <laughs> maybe people are uh, thinking, "Oh yeah, he'll do something uh, <laughs> really awful for us." <laughs> um, yeah, no. I, do you know what? I, I like. I do like. Um, I, I do like the variety. Um, I think that's you know partly why I'm I'm always making records as well, and I still keep a hand in lots of other things like make you know doing commercials and um because yeah i i i love um exploring different different musical worlds uh i'd be very happy to to try something (laughs) with a little with a little bit more cheer yeah um but uh i mean at the same time you know it's like uh, it's it's amazing to to get to get these projects that that are, have so much emotion in them, you know, you're not chasing, uh, uh, you're not you're not sort of searching for inspiration, you know. It's very powerful. Like the whole the whole package is kind of you know, whether yeah. it's the the narrative or the uh, you know the brilliant the brilliant acting and portrayals or just the the story itself or you know whether it's you know if it's documentary then whether it's um, you know, historic that a, a kind of historical truth, and you know, there's, yeah, I mean that that's that's an amazing thing to be to be able to to be able to channel. So um, if people can, you know, if people keep wanting me to do that, then that's all good too. But uh. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and that's you know, if you especially with these sorts of projects, if if you have that constant inspiration, um, I mean, in some ways, you know why work on anything else if that's just keeping you no i mean not keeping you busy but i mean keeping you inspired and to be able to uh to just write without having to bang your head against the wall hoping you can come up with a a cue oh, or sure. a theme or a motif yeah yeah no that's exactly it i i was i was actually just um i had a message from the uh from sony yeah from yes yesterday saying you know what it's give us some kind of quote uh for the soundtrack and i wrote a few bits and bobs but actually the thing that i ended up you know the kind of final sentence was 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 basically exactly that is was that you know inspiration was was not hard to come by you know it's it, and that you can't ask for more than that really can you because um you know, that's that's kind of why we do the job it's you know something comes in and um and you're like right uh and if you can just get straight into it and it's just flowing because because there's you know because you're being inspired by by what you're seeing and and and, and hearing then you know that's that's a fabulous way to work yeah i bet um and and you mentioned uh you know uh, sony so is there a soundtrack release of your score coming out yes yeah i think it's coming on the 12th as well oh, um perfect yeah so uh and uh it's yeah we've got the whole the whole score coming out i think it's uh which is uh you know it's like 34 cues or something uh which is really nice because it's kind of you know sometimes you want to do a, a sort of uh, a summary of your of the world that you created and keep it quite succinct but this was really this kind of amazing uh quite elongated and uh you know sort of uh you know multifaceted narrative with the four plots or or you know four the four themes kind of all coming together into this um you know bring bringing you to the uh, yeah to the scene in the courtroom and um uh, and so yeah it's i, I it's, it's 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 great that that we're going to have a you know the a soundtrack version of that as well you know can can sort of you can sort of feel feel the shape of the score um and, and how it develops and you know when it goes through that 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 section which you talked about in where where it gets it gets very dark and electronic and 
and hallucinatory and um and uh yeah and then sort of starts sort of comes out the other side with couches realizations and you know that by that stage his theme has been completely transformed and um and then finally with you know with kind of the 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 big sort of statement of mamadou's theme at the end so yeah and i'm uh, i'm excited to share it actually it'll be uh, i hope people like it <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so too um and i mean and obviously when you're working on a, a film or a documentary you aren't you know you don't start working on it with the hope that this is going to get released but i mean the the score itself individually is released but it, i mean that has to be a nice feeling having you know your work coming out on its own yeah yeah no it's great um and uh yeah i you never uh yeah it's, it's a I mean, sound soundtrack albums are funny things aren't they because you yeah, know the soundtrack is you know, the is you're writing music for picture you know it's applied music and um uh and it, it's functional music and and it has a you know a fundamental and um you know indelible relationship with 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 the image and so and then here we are sort of detaching it and presenting it as music and as a record um so yeah which and and the soundtracks have proven to be and soundtrack music is is has proven to be particularly popular in you know recent years which is uh so but uh yeah i so i suppose there's that there's there's a you, you sort of put that as you know it's kind of you're sort of putting that aside and it's it's just a lovely uh um there's a lovely personal satisfaction that you know that you're that uh, your music's going to be out there and people are going to get to listen to it and um yeah and and you, know, you you made the good distinction there of first and foremost it's it's functional it's you know music to picture it's meant to enhance the film itself um but then you know previously you were talking about the hope that the release kind of takes you on a similar journey right. and you know how much how much work did you have to do in crafting the standalone soundtrack to you know make sure it it creates that journey as well or i mean was that just taking you know all the cues setting them in and and it worked anyways well in this case it was it was kind of that yeah because i've included every single cue um so it in order and nor you know normally which i, I have not, not done before on, on anything really um <clears throat> yeah normally you kind of shuffle them about and, and you maybe you're looking for you're trying to make a judgment about what's the right musical experience and you know whether they feel substantial enough to be um you know to to stand alone um you know, and how these types of things make sense. Um, but in this case, yeah, I, I just felt like it was, it, you know, it should stay connected to the narrative and it should, it should be one of those types of records where it's very much the, um, you know, it's the musical, that standalone musical version of, of, of what went on really. Interesting. So yeah, I'll be, you know, time's a time's a funny thing because I won't have listened to it, you know, on its own. But then, in you know, whenever this comes out, I will have. Um, so I'm I'm interested to to hear it and kind of see how it uh, parallels the the journey of the film as well. Mm. Yeah, ho hopefully it will. Yeah, you know, hopefully it will read. I I, I I'm intrigued to to see. Um, you know, you're you're kind of oh, obviously you're asking these questions anyway. So I I feel like it's uh, yeah as the as the uh, film's going, you know, because you're thinking to you have special and and I suppose this was one of the reasons why I was actually able to to get through all the music in 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 on, on the fairly tight deadline. It's because you know once you have the themes, you can. Uh, 
you know, as the next scene comes up that requires music, you know, you're immediately going, oh, okay, so it's um, it's a, a theme with Couch and uh, Nancy Hollander. So I'm going to be drawing on this material. Um, now, how am I going to you know, manipulate it emotionally to make it work? But that that's very different to just kind of, oh, here's the scene. Um, where do I start? You know, mm -hmm. you already you already have a box to you know, and um, so so yeah, and that and that, and that as you go, you know, especially I, I suppose especially with um, I was about to say especially with Mahamadou, but actually no, it it applies it applies to all of them because um, you know you feel you you feel all of their their themes changing according to you know their journeys. Um, but which I guess is, you know, that's film scoring. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah and that, that, that's, that's part of the joy of it, you know, cause you're like, wow. Okay. Um, here, I, here I have Mohamedou's theme and I have to present this in a way that, uh, you know, that lands with, with, with those images and, or these ones or, and, and, uh, yeah. I, that's yeah that's very rewarding yeah i mean it's obviously you know for the effectiveness of the film and and for the viewer and you know in general for the listener too it, it is as well because you know you're able to whether consciously or subconsciously uh you know follow that journey also um but you know like you said that's that's film scoring i mean that's great you know that's great scoring going back you know 120 years or you know longer yeah i think i think this is another reason why this felt like uh, you know putting aside how successful i've been uh, it, with, <laughs> with this film let, let's let, let, or leave someone else to judge that but the the concept of it is it, you know that's it's exactly what you're saying you know it's like you know, picking picking a series of themes which start at the beginning and help you through the narrative and they and they take they they um you know, help the character's journey and, and help the audience understand the character's journey. You know, that is, um, that's the time, the timeless logic of, 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 uh, scoring films. And, and it, you know, I, I suppose we have different scenarios now where sometimes to you, you can have a more sort of, you know, something's just very sound worldy mm -hmm. and it's much more stylized, or you could have something like a film, you have films that are deeply sort of monothematic and, or you can have, yeah, there are, there are lots of, um, you know, lots of different ways now we, we approach things, but this one I felt was, was very much in, in the lineage of, of, uh, you know, that, like you say, how many decades worth of, uh, of, of how one, how, how one should go about it here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it is interesting, you, you mentioning all the different ways to approach it now, because I think so many people are, are steeped in kind of the, like, the Wagnerian elite motif, and, you know, that's where a lot of this comes from, and, mm. you know, especially in recent years, not that it's fallen away, but like you said, there, there are so many more ways to go about it, mm. um, which I, I quite like, you know, some people mm. like the, the classic orchestral, five themes um and you know there's there's uh, mm. plenty of that and room for that too but with those different approaches and especially with your background in a lot of, of uh, more experimental music do you necessarily go in to a project you know thinking all right i'm gonna do themes i'm gonna do something more monolithic or is it like you said where as you are experiencing the project then it comes out as no, I I've got to do these four themes. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Uh, you know, it was a it it was a shock to me to be sitting there writing light motifs. Yeah, I was. Um, it was. I, I I didn't really expect um, to be going at it that way, and you know, like having a just just picking out a you know, a set of notes uh, and, and chords on the piano and thinking to myself, is this, you know, 
is this robust enough to be able to manipulate and um you know if i did it or reharmonize there and you know uh, that that no that is i i don't normally go at it like that at all i, I would be much more uh, as you describe this kind of um let's see where where things lead and and try and and i suppose start by looking for more experimental answers because uh I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's that's what appeals to me. But I also think for you know audiences are quite sophisticated, either you know in their film music listening anyway. So, um, but yeah, this was this just felt like it were it was it needed the approach that it did. Um, and obviously, I tried to do it. You, you then you try and do it in your own way, you know, and kind of. Mohamedou's theme, I suppose, really does fall in a kind of light motif -y logic to it. Couch, yeah, you know, because it's so much more hybrid and it um, has a kind of electronic kind of glitchy element to start with. And, um, you know, there was, you know, I, the part of the transformation was was much more kind of the mangling of the string parts so you know in a, in a more experimental way um and nancy well, i mean yeah that i, I, I suppose she's you know that's, that's a little bit more it's, that's probably the second most light motif -y, you know and she, she was interesting in that it, it was it needed to feel quite com commercial I don't, uh, up front, um, like genuinely legal thrillery, you know, to like, the challenge of all these plots and bringing people into what was going to be a really challenging story, you know. So hers was, you know, you wanted it to be oh, it, music that, that felt like it was, I, I need to, un I need to uncover this this legal mystery and I got to follow the, follow the answers and follow the truth and um, follow justice. And, and, and so that, um, so yeah, I suppose that, and, but then the Guantanamo theme, you couldn't really call a theme. It's, it's, a sound, it's very much a sound world, you know, it's absolutely experimental sound world, which you then drag in mangled bits of all the other themes. So now that would be from, you know, mm -hmm. from a more modern take on film scoring where you're like okay i want my sound world to be this bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. well technically you'd be kind of oh yeah i'm going to drag in this bit of spring reverb and that bit of this and i'll use this uh type of manipulation and i'll put it through there and um you know so that and uh, that came about from much more sort of like dark colors and um yeah more my kind of esoteric record making and things like that so yeah even even in my even even having talked about my very uh light motif -y, uh, <laughs> film score there, there's obviously lots of other stuff involved well and it's i mean it is very fitting because i was surprised at you know, the use of themes because, you know, some of the, I, I think with films like that are, you know, much more um, you know, modern or visceral films, you don't really hear them as much. Um, mm. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways, because they're so tied to uh, the idea of, you know, having very obvious melodies and sometimes it just doesn't quite work with that style of film. So I was, I was surprised, but at the same time, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, they're not they're not these just overwhelming melodies there's a lot of experimentation and uh you know soundscape and everything so it's it, yeah. it, it was quite an interesting mixture yeah i mean it's, it was really delicate balance you know i i, I, mean, I for example with mohammedu i remember when I, when i first came up with the you know the sort of um set of that the, the kind of main cell the first thing i thought to myself was could I just put this melody over a drone and will it still, yeah, in, in very general terms, you know, put it over a, you know, some kind of soundscape, uh, of, you know, just 
gently undulating and will it still would it still come across you know and that was one of the first things i tried in fact and that is um you know that's kind of where the opening title sequence comes from you know it's this 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 sort of stillness um which is made up of bits and you know strings and but also uh, electronic elements but then um but also then when it does need to be a kind of something which which moves harmonically in order that then it was also possible but yeah I, that that that's that's exact that's exactly it i, I was you know, trying to find the balance between between the you know that those two states um and i think it means probably it, you know the melodies or the harmonic motion does need to be maybe a, a bit more subtle than just um that kind of uh direct here's here's the big theme for right. for the hero type type thing um but but then you know as you said it it allows it to it allows that balance to kind of oscillate throughout the film you know at some points it's more in the forefront or other times less so yeah. just based on what's going on and i think creating that balance in the beginning lets you you know much more organically uh, move throughout the film oh good well <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you think so but no i mean you know it's it's great then when you do have that set that you can you know you can deliver something you know in the more the you know the, the especially the two the handful of kind of really emotive moments for Mohammedu, and you've got you've got somewhere to go there because mm -hmm. you know you do have this uh, melody that you can just kind of roll out in uh, uh, you know the universal language of piano and strings you know <laughs> um, but then have quickly disappear off into uh, some <laughs> melange yeah um, no absolutely um, and and so we're we're uh just about running out of time, but I did want to, you know, change gears really quick before mm, sure. we part ways. Okay, you know, you've you've been we're... scoring for media for, you know, quite a long time, uh, mm. 15, almost 20 years, mm. as well as creating music for, you know, for quite a while as well. Do you have any advice for anybody who's starting out or kind of in those early years? Uh, the advice question. <laughs> um, yeah, I, where, where am I going to say? Should have I should should have thought this was coming. Well, once well, I, had again, to, I, I had to surprise you with it. Yeah, once I've been here, once once again I've been ill prepared. Um, <laughs> Yeah, do you know it's? I mean, it's always been it's always been a tough industry. I, I think it's particularly uh, it's particularly difficult. To, uh, I, and uh, that's putting Corona aside as well. It must right. be next to impossible. Let's let's just put that aside. But even in even in better times, um, yeah, uh, the the challenge of of getting heard. Um, I mean. I guess I would say you, you just need to try and find a, something that sounds like you. Um, so, you know, with, obviously there's only, there are, there's only so many ways you can, uh, you, you know, no one's, no one's, let's put it another way, you know, you know, no one's expecting you to, to reinvent the wheel, you know, but um, at the same time, I think focusing on trying to find an original voice is is uh, is really important, you know. And, and it's something I I think about every every piece of scoring that I do. You know, it's it the first obviously the you know, first and foremost you're like, how can I make this serve the the project that I'm on, you know, serve the picture. But after that, and very swiftly after that, I think to myself, what can I do 
that will that I feel is some kind of you know, original statement um, and at least striving for it you know who, who knows whether you can you know, whether you succeed every time but I, I think that's pretty important I think it it, it, it can it comes across I, I like to think it comes across in the music you know it's like um, working hard to you know, just whether it's a whether it's a surprising selection of uh, instruments or a su surprising harmonic motion or a surprising bit of you know a surprising sound world or an interesting reference or whatever it might be I, I think you know uh, that that's that other than the more sort of all the other advice I'd give would probably be the more standard things you know like just working hard and uh, and um, you know look, looking out for, you know being ready for being ready for the opportunity when it comes you know that's that's the thing it's like you don't you don't get say uh, you don't get a, a rehearsal you know when when the moment comes you have to be ready for it so um about even that even that kind of advice i'd say is a bit you know it's the kind of thing that you know um most people yeah i, I it, it's 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 that that's all i can think of <laughs> <laughs> you know what for, for being unprepared and uh for me catching you on the spot yeah, that, that was a it was a good but more importantly it was it, it was an honest answer good well there you go that's uh i think you know trying to trying to find the I, I i try to approach that in the music you know i try and yeah you know, it, it always yeah maybe maybe this is part of maybe i'm now carrying on with the answer but it's like finding the truth in everything you know it doesn't that's that's pretty key because that you know i think i think people can feel that i think you can feel that in the music um and it doesn't have to be and that actually goes you know that's kind of uh, falls into the serving the picture side of things it's actually kind of more it's more important than the originality you know if you can if you can find the truth in it then you can find the truth just by playing it on the piano you know okay great if you're if you're um you know you're a production genius fabulous but um so yeah and there's always some you know there's there's always some truth to be found it doesn't matter like something like the mauritanian you know like we said the the inspiration is is uh, very easy to find but it doesn't matter there's whatever you're staring at there's always something that you can draw on to make some kind of emotional resonance um and if you feel you know and it and if then the the listener feels that and hopefully you know and in, and in the case of um you know aspiring film composer if that listener is someone who's going to commission something if they feel that 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 they're going to connect to that and that's you know that might be what the that might be what the break is and then after that it's about being ready and all the all those other things oh cool i i appreciate it you know i if, if uh you have someone who has a wealth of experience you've got to draw on it a little bit at least very good um so yeah tom i i really appreciate you joining me thank you i enjoyed our chat that was good <laughs> good I'm, I'm glad <laughs> so uh you know sign off and have a have a good rest of the weekend and uh, i'll talk to you soon yeah enjoy the snow <laughs> <laughs> well.